Hi, uh, my name is Chris Lubkeman. I'm a longtime Whittler, been many, many years, probably most of my life. And uh, I've done a number of books with Fox Chapel Publishing. And of the five books that Fox Chapel has done, the one project that's in every single one of the books is the knife slash letter opener. It's one of the most fun projects to make, and I use it as the first project that I teach in my classes. And what we do is we start out with a relatively straight piece of wood. If there's a little bit of a curve to it, that's okay. That'll just make a, a nice curve in the blade of the knife. It could be this big. It could be this big. This is flowering plum. It is nasty hard. It makes incredibly nice knives, though. Or if you really want to get aggressive, you make one out of a piece of maple like this. If you really want to have a challenge, you get a little teeny twig like this. And I can make one, two, I can make two buoy knives out of this little twig. And if you're in a restaurant, you can take a toothpick, cut it in half, and make two little knives out of a, uh, a toothpick. So anyway, this is the project that we'll be working on now, the knife. And uh, once you know how to make the knife, there are other things that you can make that sort of take off from the knife. So let's have fun making the knife. Okay, here is the blank for the letter opener. Just a slightly curved piece of uh, birch. And I want to make sure that I make the, the blade where it's straight. I don't want it curved like that. Okay, the first thing I'll do is I'll just round off the, the butt of the handle a little bit. Notice my thumb is down here. Uh, one thing you always want to remember when you're cutting is that the knife is not too smart. It doesn't know the difference between wood and meat. And so when you when the knife leaves the wood, you want to make sure it hits air and not meat. So I don't cut like that. I cut like that. Okay, now that we have that rounded, I'm going to put a little, little groove around the handle here. And I'll make a confession now. Uh, this piece of wood that I brought to show how to make a knife is definitely not ideal. It is rock hard. It's a piece of seasoned, 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 seasoned birch. And so I'm going to have to work especially hard uh, to get this one done. When you're working on a, a piece of wood like this, if you get a green one, it'll work a lot, a lot better. But okay, now I'm going to try to get this little groove cleaned out here. The little V cuts in from one side and down from the other. Now let's make the the handle. This will be the handle. And I'm gonna make the blade from about here down. Okay, nice long cuts. Don't cut like this because then it'll be all choppy. Nice long cuts. Try to go pretty much the whole length of the... Then from this side... Okay, you have to make sure that you're aimed right. Okay, I have it a little bit crooked here, so now I'm going to have to take more from up top here. And from this side here. So keep checking it out to make sure your blade is, is uh, straight. If it's a little crooked, it's uh, maybe a little bit normal. That's it's a natural branch and so they're they're not all perfectly straight. See my left thumb working on my right thumb? If those of you who are right-handed, 
one of the most useful parts of your whole body is your left thumb because it'll push, it'll guide, it'll do all kinds of uh, cool things. For you, those of you who are left-handed, it's going to be your right thumb. See, my left thumb is pushing against my right thumb here. It gives it a lot more, a lot more power. Okay. Just about got it. So here. Okay, now let's take the bark off. Here's my left thumb act, acting as a guide, as a stop. Okay, take the bark off there. Take the bark off the top. Okay, now this is going to be my sharp side. So I'm going to bring that down to a, a nice sharp blade. Okay, before I do the point on the blade, let me make the separation between the blade and the handle. This is another V. Don't ever try to pull the wood out. That'll it'll just split something. Make sure the, the cuts just meet each other. Okay, now we'll go here. Okay, let's go over to this side of these things. Okay, now from the top. Okay, now we're going to do the, the point of the blade. You can draw this with a pencil if you want, or, but uh, generally you don't have to. I'm just going to go from here and there and down here. There is the pith, and you don't want the pith on the blade itself. So it doesn't matter if the pith shows, but make sure it's on the side and not on the actual blade because that'll be a weak spot. Okay, there's the basic shape, but now let's do a little bit more on the handle. Uh, Let's do another little ring around here. And then I'll show you how to finish this blade. I, I normally do the little uh, side swatches uh, where I can wood burn something, but I, I, uh, in the interest of time, I won't do that. That, that we can figure out how to do uh, later. But uh, what I will show you how to do is smooth the knife and get it really sharp and then make that blade even better okay and it looks a little bit rough now but now I'm just going to sand it now if this were green it would have been easier to carve up to this point but I wouldn't have been able to sand it because you can't sand green wood this is uh, very very dry wood so it sands very nicely Make sure when you sand, you don't come back on the point. I've done that. Uh, the knife does poke. <laughs> Burn 
something if we want to. But now I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned from the woodcarvers in Sarasota, Florida. If you ever want to reinforce something that's very thin, you take super glue. And now watch this. I'm going to wet the edge. All out. Oh, there's, there's some on that side. Okay. Okay, here it is on this side. Now, I'll take this little chip of wood here, spread it out along the edge, and that penetrates uh, that fine edge of the knife. Now, when that's dry, I'll re-sand it, and it'll be very, very uh, hard, and, and it'll be uh, sharper. Now, you probably can't cut steak with this, but then again, you might be able to. But that's the idea of a letter opener. Now we'll be doing some other projects that basically take off from this one where we have a handle, but we'll do a little bit of different from the handle out. A uh, fork, a uh, spreader, uh, a poker. So, But uh, this is the basic idea of the knife and this gets translated into some other projects that we'll be doing. Now this project is a lot like the letter opener. We have a handle, except this is a shorter handle. And from here on down, it's going to be different. I could make a little letter opener out of this, but we're going to make a spreader like for uh, jelly or something like that. Have a little paddle down here and uh, the little neck or the stem. Okay, I'm going to start right about here. Notice I can't cut out like that because that would just lift out the wood and like I couldn't do this and come out because it would split the wood and I'd lose part of the paddle. So I have to have the cuts meet each other. Always cut towards center. Okay, here I'm cutting towards center. And here I'm cutting back toward the center wood. Okay, and then we'll round the stem a little bit. And of course you can make it a lot smoother by uh, sanding it. Okay, there's a little spreader. You can spread stuff with it, but uh, let's take this spreader now and transform it into a pickle fork. So we, we can do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in here. Don't come down this way and this way. Start at the point of the V, and I'm pushing with my left thumb. Now I'm going to hold this like this. Okay. Now we're turning a spreader into a pickle fork. Or I can go like this. And this is one of the reasons you want that knife to have that nice fine point on it. So you can get into these little spaces like this. Make that little turn right there. If I had a broad pointed blade, I wouldn't be able to do this. Sharpen the little prongs here. And 
and we can refine this, we can tweak it, we can sand it, we can make it thinner, but that's the basic idea of a pickle fork. So that, that was a spreader, now it's a pickle fork. Now we'll take a little piece of wood here, and we're just going to make uh, a pickle poker. And we're going to make it, uh, we're going to make the handle, but we're going to make the handle a little bit different. We're going to make the handle, the head of the handle like a rooster head. So this is going to be a, a rooster headed pickle poker. And later on we'll be showing how to do the whole rooster start to finish. But here we're just going to do a quick head on the handle of this uh, poker here. All right. Now you don't have to remember this because this we'll, we'll we'll be getting to this when we do when we do the rooster. But if you if you pay attention, you'll be that farther ahead uh, when it comes to to doing the rooster. This is going to be the top of his comb. Okay, and come in from the front and up. And then from the back, I'm pushing up with my left thumb. Let's sharpen the beak here. Make a little V cut here, just a little bit at a time. Don't try to do this in two big cuts. Two very small cuts. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now the waddles. In, up, in, up, in, up. Okay, round it off. So it kind of looks like a half heart upside down. Now let's just split the waddles a little bit. Okay, now that's this. The handle is going to be up here, and we're going to make the poker part down here. And what I'm basically going to do is just sharpen this. Remember, use these nice long strokes, kind of lock your hand a lot, and uh, make nice long strokes. A lot of people tend to do this, or, or and don't ever scrape with your knife. If you scrape with your knife, you'll dull it. Just, just slice, slice, slice. Okay, now we're going to make a nice point down here, and this will pick up any olive you want, or pickle, or tomato slice. A uh, quick suggestion too, don't try to cut as fast as I'm cutting right now. I've been doing this for 50 years and uh, so I've gotten it down to a science and I, I work fairly fast. But uh, take your time, especially at the beginning, and then after you get used to it a little bit then you can speed up. But uh, don't, don't try to go too fast. Okay, now we got a nice sharp point there. And there is a poker, and that'll that'll definitely poke pickles and olives and uh, shrimp and whatever else you want to poke. Thanks, and we'll work on another project next time. <laughs>